Boat Show TV with this great Florida Power Boat Club feature here in Fort Myers for the weekend for the Fort Myers Poker Run. We thought we'd stop by and say hi to our friends at Nortec High Performance Boats. You know, Tron, it's been nine years since we've done a factory tour at the Nortec factory when we built the 2008 uh, Nortec Super V. It was a 39-footer, the King of Clubs, and since then, you guys have gotten really busy building a lot of different boats. Uh, not just performance boats anymore, not just the big yachts, but a whole line of high-performance center consoles. Yeah, that's correct. And I always started a line, the smallest one is 30 feet. Then we have a 34, a 39, 45, 55, and 56. That's all the new lines or the new models that was not around when we did your boat last time. So obviously the center console market is very strong these yeah. days. So that's what you're gonna see in the factory now. You're gonna see a lot of center consoles. We have a few performance boats uh, here and there that sneaks themselves in. We're building a flyer and a little bit of that we're gonna see a little later in the tour. Of course, Tron Scow, one of the uh, Nortec founders and co-owners, there's a lot of other people and there's a lot of other moving parts to this whole equation. Tron told me the simple thing we can do today is get started right here in layup. He's gonna show us how they build the boats we're gonna to go to the paint shop and we can see how we paint the boats. A lot of those custom paint jobs taking place right here at Nortec. Of course, then there's rigging and upholstery, which is all done in-house. So essentially, when you buy a boat from Nortec, it's a custom boat that is 100% built right here at this factory facility. Tron, I say we get started. Let's go. We're gonna go down here and look at some layouts of the house. We're here in the layup shop where it all gets started. Tron tells me that we have molds here that start at 34 feet and go all the way up to 56 feet, is that correct? Yeah, it's actually over 80 foot mold is right behind us also. Yeah. So, um, yes, that's correct. We have over 34 here, then over 39. The 45 and 56 is made in the same mold. Sure. And then, uh, like I said, the 80 is behind there, you know. Let's talk about the difference between, I know that you had the 55 here that's going to be an outboard boat. The inboard boat, uh, stern drive boat, is going to be called a 56. It's essentially the same mold, the same hull, and also from that same uh, mold comes the 45, correct? That's correct, because the 45 is uh, two steps and the 56 has three steps. I see. Okay, so you're just basically extending uh, you know, the layup of the boat in the same mold. Now, why did you decide that a 55 and a 56 were going to be different depending on the rigging? Because the outboard has a setback that we put an insert in the mold versus the inboard boat is right on the transom. That's where you have the fit difference. Yes. Now, uh, hull number one for 55 right here beside us, but several hulls already, or at least a few of the 56, last time I was here, they were already in rigging. That's correct. We have two 56 in rigging. We're going to see it shortly. Uh, we have two 55 already glassed. Hull number one is right here next to us, and the other one is in the other corner. Let's talk about time. I know it takes a lot more time to lay up a big boat. About a 34 or a 39. How long from the first day that they lay the glass in the mold to the time that you pop the mold and move this hull out? How about how long would that process take? Uh, it's about, uh, I would say, about six to eight weeks in this area. Yeah. And then after that, we have another five weeks in the rig shop, and then the boat is ready to leave. So if you didn't have any backed up production schedules, you could build a boat in about, you know, by the sounds of it, about 16 weeks. But of course, Nortec is a very popular boat right now, and I understand you've got production backed up quite a ways. How many boats would you say you have in a production backlog at this point where they've got to come in, they, they're not even in the uh, layup shop yet, but they're on paper and they're ready to be built? Uh, currently we have over 80 boats in back order, and, uh, but some of them are in this process. So boats not started yet, we're probably looking at around 60 boats. That's amazing. So obviously that's why it's lunchtime now and everyone is still working. So clearly your employee situation here uh, is at full capacity. You've hired as many people as you can and you're probably still hiring just to keep up with that production backlog. Yeah, we had hired last year, we hired over 60 more people. Right now we have over 200 people working here. We're also building a new factory, another 50,000 square foot. It's gonna be a new rig shop, so then all you see in this plant is gonna be in the fiberglass only. And that way we'll be able to increase the production. So we're currently building almost two boats a week. Without getting too technical, Tron, before we move on to the next department, Give us, uh, you know, your 60-second version of what layup process you use here, how your layup is done, and why that might be different than some of the other manufacturers. What have you been doing, what works for you, and what is Nortec 
and going to continue to do to keep building quality boats. And well, we, we keep it, uh, what do you call it, keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. Uh, that seems to work forever. We've we done the same process all these years. Yes. All the boats are hand laid. Yes. Uh, all the molds turned, as you can see, even in the process behind us here. Yeah. And that gives us the, we have a very controlled layout that way. And there is, the chances for screw up goes down to almost a minimum, you know. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of the new, new infusion techniques and all that stuff. There's a lot of possibility for screw-ups in that yeah. process. And then a lot of the guys that work on the floor are more basic people, so yeah. keep it basic and uh, this quality stays on the top, you know. Um, and just for the layman out there, or the people watching, you know, and I'll, I'll describe this as best I can. Hand laid means a person with tools is actually touching every square inch of the fiberglass as it's laid up, putting pressure on it and curing it, making sure that it is Basically, the texture is curing the way it needs to be for maximum strength, as opposed to machinery, machines and vacuum layup, which is where there's vacuum bags and suction. The ball doesn't get touched by every square inch by a person's hands. Is that correct? That is correct. And obviously, when you have a vacuum bag system that works perfectly, that's a great uh, There's nothing wrong with that. But it's equal as good as what we do in here, and it's a lot safer. Yep. way of building the boat correct and uh, that's why we choose to do it this way sure. you can see these guys are laying up a hole right behind us yep. and it is uh, it's a, they are in total control of the lay of the whole process we also gives us the, the between each layer we let them cure out then get them sanded and then we stay it in the what they call the chemical bonding window through the whole process so sure. it's, it's a very very safe way and Knock on wood, we haven't had any failure after all these years. Well, that's, that's, if there's, there's no better testimonial than your 25 years of boat building history. I've never once seen a Nortec hull failure. Of course, I've owned a Nortec, but running the Florida Powerboat Club and being as close to Nortec as we have for all these years, you know, we've seen the quality of the product. We've never seen a hull failure. We've seen integrity in the way they're built, structural strength. And I think that's what people want to keep seeing. And I think that's why you guys are doing so well. Yeah, and we also we kind of overbuild the bolts. You know, we make them a lot stronger than they really have to be. Sure. It's better to be on the safe side. You know, we also the process when we uh, put the parts together, the hull and the deck get all bonded together. All the parts get bonded. When the stringer system goes in, it's all you no know, composite material. The vanicel we're using the Cusa. Yep. It's no longer any wood in these bolts. You know, sure. so. You have no problem. In the old days, you had wooden transoms that got rotten and all that stuff. So that's that's in the old days. Now it's all composite, everything. I think we all know that if you want to get a good paint job, you've got to work in a downdraft paint booth, and that's what Nortec has here. Biggest one I've ever stood in, about 20 feet by about 80 feet. Tron, that gives you the ability to paint not all your boats, but most of them right here and do the custom paint jobs inside the booth. That's correct. The only boat we don't fit in here is the 80. Sure. But all the other boats we can paint in here. And like you said, it's a dome raft boot. You don't get any dust in the, in the paint whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, the paint team here now with Paul in charge of the paint team. Yep. He, he's been with us for almost 20 years now. Yep. And you know we have a crew of, he has a crew of 10 guys that constantly paint. So. We are able to paint two balls a week in here right now. What people don't realize, Tron, and I guess you can validate this today, is that when you build a custom center console that has so many bit parts, you've got that huge console, you've got some component parts and bit parts inside the cockpit uh, that are separate from the hull itself. So you essentially have to paint the boat twice because you've got to paint the hull separately, and then now we've got behind us this giant console, which has to be painted separately before it's installed into the boat. So. Since you're building mostly center consoles, there's actually a two-part or maybe even a three-part process to painting each boat. Yeah, that's correct. A lot of the small parts, we have a secondary boot behind here that we paint all the smaller parts in. Yeah. But when you see the finished product, you're gonna see there's a lot of painted parts, like the upper consoles. Sure. So this, the center console itself, there could be the seat, the cooler, it could the be top. lids, yeah. the tops, yeah. all that stuff. Even some of the components, like the radar, people want to match and all that sure. type of thing. So the painting has become a, we thought when we were going into the center console business that we're gonna slide away from all these big paint jobs, but now this, I don't know, right back at where we started and even more and with more paint the, the items on these boats. Because the center consoles went from being a fish boat when we started 
that was mostly people using them for fishing. I know most people use them to have a good time and party in them, you know. So the requirement for fit and finish has gone up tremendously in these products. You probably don't even really have a gel coat. We try to keep some of the areas gel coat where, where the traffic areas are where people you know, hit the, the side with their foot and stuff like that. We don't recommend to paint the inside right. of the gunnels right. and that type of thing. Places like the top of the deck where people have rings and that type of thing. Yeah. We try to steer people away from painting that right. uh, for the simplicity part, you know? Right, and just use a hard gel coat on that. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to point out is that the now that you are painting more boats and there's more range of colors, I see a lot more of a trend towards metallics and Nortec seem to have zoned in on these darker uh, bronze and uh, brownish and goldish, uh, silver, a lot of metallics. That seems to be a trend now. Are you getting, and even in the colors like the blues and the reds, everyone seems to love the metallic. Is that presented any challenges for Paul in his painting? No, I mean, we've been painting metallic colors all the time. There's also another effect that's out there now, it's called ice. I don't know yes. if you're familiar with it. It looks like an icing on the paint, so you can take a base color, like a solid color, and you ice it. This gives you this yet another type of metallic effect. Sure. And also some of them have the old, more like the flaky uh, metallic, but yeah. big, big shiny big things, but yeah. it shines everywhere. Yeah. So it's a combination of all of them, you know, but right now there's a, the trend, the color trend is kind of amazing because we're painting a blue boat, never, you never go wrong with making a blue boat. Blue boat seems to, everybody loves a blue boat. When you go with the more extreme colors, then you have either, oh, I love it or I hate it. Yeah. So that's kind of interesting with the color. We're here in the rigging department now, Tron. Uh, this is where pretty much the boat gets put together the rest of the way. From what I see here, a lot of details on these rigging sheets and these sales order sheets. Uh, but yeah, what goes on here? Uh, this is exactly what you're saying. This is where the engines and everything get installed. The poles get installed here. Basically, when it's done here, it goes out this door and we can go and see travel boat. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like you said, the, the build sheet is an important part. Uh, a lot of times the clients want to change things. And uh, yeah. so you need to stay on top of that. And sometimes the changes are a little late in the game. So, uh, but there's, we try to know be sure that everybody gets their order in, in time, at the right time, so we can please everybody's wishes. It's it's pretty simple here, you know, there's the build sheet, everything is detailed, and it's it's important stuff, but clearly this piece of paper stays with the boat. By the way, this is 560-02, so it's the second 56. This particular one has four diesels with harness and surface drives. The one to my right over here, triple diesels. But uh, just look at this bottom paint. Upholstery is gray, white, diamonds, McLaren gray. McLaren gray, we know what that is. Uh, a black deck with weathered flex, uh, with weathered flexi, so that's gonna be the deck materials. Uh, life rafts, uh, fenders, and the engine hatch. So it's all detailed. Basically, this boat's ready for the water when it leaves. Yes, and you know, when the boats are done, they have everything ropes and line and, yep. and anchors and everything. Right. So you can go boating that day you get the boat. Now, uh, obviously you have everything in here at one time. This is a big room. I know you wish it was bigger, uh, and we'll get into that in a minute. But you've got a flyer here, you've got a 56 here, you've got a 39 here, a 34 over there. So you really don't have much choice. You've just got to jam as many boats in here at one time as you possibly can. Yeah, we also have another building over here that we build eight boats in at the same time okay. also. Yeah. So, you know, obviously we try to get a good flow here, but we definitely need more room, so that's obviously why we've been on building a new building. Here. It was nine years ago that I stood in this room with you, Tron, and we were laid eyes on the finishing touches of the King of Clubs, a 2008 Nortec 39 Super V. I think it went out that door, and just like you said, we put the boat, we, it was on a trailer, we put the boat on the back of the truck, we drove it about five or 10 miles from here, we went on a, a little river, and we drove the boat, on, you drove the boat 105 miles per hour. Yeah, that was a great time, you know, the boat turned out really nice, and it was a very fun project. Um, I should keep my day job, Tron, but uh, we're here in upholstery, and uh, boy, you make some nice stuff. This is all custom made, all in-house. Diamond tufted, got padding in the middle of it. I suppose that's just one of the many features you get in this department. Yeah, and, and you did a good job of making yourself an underwear there, Stu. <laughs> <laughs> nice diamond pattern and everything. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that's a good thing. Now, this is where it all happened, uh, poster wise Obviously, over the years, we came up with a lot of different designs. Unfortunately, we can't patent the design, so we see a lot of other designs uh, crawling boat. all over in other boats. <laughs> so we constantly have to come up with new ideas, you know, to stay ahead of the game. Well, the main thing is, is that you have to use good quality fabrics and good quality stitching and, uh, and you know, fabrics that are going to last a long time, which is clearly is. I think that's what's important, right? Yeah, and Paul Street, now these vinyls, because of the environmental problems, you, you, there's a stuff in the vinyls called arsenic, which is not a very good stuff, that used to keep the molding away. Oh. Now, because of the new environmental rules, right. they take a lot of that out of the vinyl. So, now it's only a very few vinyls that doesn't mold, you know, which you call pink mold. You've probably seen it in some of the boats. And so, we try to, you know, obviously use the type of vinyl that doesn't go pink mold. And uh, that's because of the, in the past that was not a problem. No, it's a problem because of uh, the arsenic is no longer in the vinyl. But uh, another thing I wanted to ask is that, you know, they're custom boats. So you, but you must have a standard package that comes with when a guy, you know, when a couple orders a boat and they want certain fabrics and certain um, colors and certain styling of the way it's done. But what if they want to get crazy? How, how do you decide at what point do you say to your customer, Okay, this is what we do with this custom, with the normal package, but this is gonna, crazy is gonna cost you more. At what point do you decide that you've gotta start charging the customer more for crazy over the top stuff? Uh, if it's extremely crazy, we charge more money, but most of the different design you see in the Nortex are, I don't call it standard, but that's an option that you can pick. Yes. You know, you can pick the, the diamonds, the lines, the GT style, whatever style that we do. Sure. And as like you see underneath all these tables, here is a million rolls of vinyls in all kinds of colors. Right. And then so you can, when you buy this, we always get a lot of extra. So in case in the future, if something happened to your stuff, we can go back and find the vinyl that you had in your boat and, and replace parts that's broken. Well, that's important. I wanted to find out about that because I saw a couple of seats that were being redone there. You know, what about, um, you know, let's just say that I kept the King of Clubs and the 08 boat and now it's almost 2018 so 10 years later and I want to redo the interior in the King of Clubs do I have to go to an aftermarket guy and just get him to try to make it look the same or do you take some customers back in for refitting because I know you had one Norwegian customer Johan Mustad he's got a 2004 Nortec 43 so that boat is 13 years old and he told me he was bringing it back to the Nortec factory for some refitting so what exactly was he doing and what you know to what level will you do that to a boat I kind of started and I just want to do a little things and then when it got here it's going to do a lot of things. Yeah, so, of course. so that's kind of how it rolls but uh, you know we, we do some of that we, uh, but we're so busy now so we try not to right. get too much involved with it but all clients, all friends, stuff like that we, we step up to the plate and do that for them. All right, well, did you hear that, Nortec owners? <laughs> you got it from Tron, the owner. So, no, I'm not, I'm not trying to say, you, I understand, you want to keep the business rolling, uh, you want to keep putting out new boats, and you've got X number of employees and X number of hours in a week. So, uh, obviously, your business model is to build new boats, so let's keep doing that. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've pretty much seen most of the important parts inside the factory, Tron. Uh, let's go find the newest, prettiest, cleanest boat that's just about ready to roll out. And whatever it is, I don't care what it is. And let's get on it and you can show me what it is about that boat that makes it so cool. Because I know we're gonna love it, but let's go find a boat that's almost done. Yeah, we're gonna find a 45 that's almost done and then we can also show you a 39 that is done. It's actually one of the members of the club that has the boat here for service. Okay. And it's gonna go on the run later on this weekend. Okay, good, perfect. Tron, I'm guessing we're probably a couple of weeks away from completing this 45, it's all number four. Of the new 45, you tell me you're backlogged to about 30 orders, and I can see why. It's a boat that pretty much has everything you want on it. Very luxurious, still sporty. Four Mercury Racing 400 Arverados, so it's gonna perform well. Um, what is it about this boat that is just, uh, everyone is just raving about it? It's just, it seems like it has a little bit of everything. Yeah, it actually has, you know, first of all, the ride itself is out of, out of this world, you know, it's a fantastic ride. Yeah. It's dry and it's fast, you know, we get, I got all, almost up to 80 miles an hour with the four 400s. Yeah. It's set up for everyday use, this is a 75 mile an hour boat. Uh, we fill it full of fuel and we only drop a mile and a half. 
tractor, and that's a 480 gallon fuel tank, so that's pretty amazing. Of course, I've seen uh, and ridden on the one, uh, hole number one, with five Mercury Racing 400s. Uh, it performed very well. Uh, now, by the way, we're in production right now. There's people working on the boat all over. You can't see them, but off camera, we've got people in the transom, we've got people down in the cockpit, and down in the, uh, down in the cabin, actually. And by the way, the cabin is huge in this boat. I was amazed at how big it is, and I guess that's got to be one of the big features. Yeah, people like to have a separate head, you know, a nice head and shower feature, big head that turns into a sofa. You have a little, uh, you know, entertainment center. You can have a galley there if you like that. So this, we give the people all the options what they're going to do with the area. One of the boats, we made a yacht kitchen in it, which is a tender to a big yacht. And then the crew will do all the prep for the food and drinks and stuff like that in the galley here and then serve the people on the boat. So we see a lot of these big boats like this are yacht tenders, believe it or not, you know. I believe it. The other thing I wanted to talk about was, and it, I kind of alluded to it with the upholstery, the electronics package here. So we've got these big, uh, what are they, uh, 18 garments, 20, 20 inch? So much 20 inch. Yeah, this so. one has the 16 inch in it. That's only, okay, so we've got two of those. Uh, we've got obviously the Mercury um, vessel view, the Mercury computer. Um, we've got basic, you know, a nice package of electronics here. Is this kind of like something that the that you as a manufacturer will provide a standard package, or do you tell the customer we're going to start with a blank template here, and you're going to add what you want? Is that how it works? Yeah, they, most of the people they go with the two GPSs. That some of them, is the 22 is the biggest one you can fit in here. But then a lot of them go with the 16, so you can get all the features in the dash. Yeah. So that's totally up to the customer. Obviously, the 22 inch is a very expensive unit. Yeah. Not really necessary. These 16 works fine. Sure. So uh, it, it's that's kind of a taste and preference. Yeah. They all have autopilots. Uh, they all have uh, you know all kinds of sound systems. We have most of these 45 all have generators, so yeah. that you're running your air condition. Some of them even have the gyro system in it, you know, the stabilizing right. system. Have you done very many of those uh, gyros yet? I've seen a few of them in some other manufacturers. Yeah, we did uh, hull number two of the 45 have a gyro in it, and we also did a 39 foot with, okay. with the gyro. And for the tender, uh, both those boats are tenders, and the reason why they're popular for the tenders is that when the big yachts used to have huge stabilizing systems, right. And then you're gonna go launch next to the yacht and take people from the tender to the yacht. Yeah. And then as the smaller boat coming to wiggle around. Yeah. So with the, with the gyro, there's the, the big ball and the little ball has no movement and it's very safe to go ah, from I the see. smaller boat yeah. to the bigger boat. Makes sense. Well, this pretty much gives us an idea of what the final stages are all about. And by the way, uh, I'm like 34, 39, 39, uh, 45 here. Another 45 here behind me, then backed up by backed up by another 39, backed up by two 56s, and then the flyer. So, you know, you're talking 10, 12 boats here in the finishing room, and there's not really a square foot to walk in this room. So, where exactly you got another facility where you have eight boats? So the 34s are being finished. Where is that? And that's right in the same industrial park as here, and we also have another glass shop in, in Cape Coral where we originally started. And you remember where you came the first time and we were in the Cape Coral area. And that's the place where we're going to put the new uh, rig shop in. And that new rig shop will then take uh, all of this work away or you'll leave, still leave some of the work here and you'll do some of the boats up there? Is that you're going to mix it up by models? Yeah, then we're going to get obviously uh, over twice as much area. So we want to try to keep all the rigging in one room and then all the fiberglass and assemble the boat here. So when they come from here, they paint it, they go to to the, the rig shop there. So you would essentially kind of convert this room to more layup, I'm guessing. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, we actually put the together. We lay up in there and put them together in this room. I see. The Assemble them here. Well, that makes sense. Making best use of your space. You've been here a long time now. As long as I can remember. How many years here at this building now? Uh, they've probably been here uh, 12 years already. Is it something that even longer? Yeah, maybe even longer. All right, well, good to know that you're planning ahead forward uh, and building up the new facilities in Cape Coral which isn't that far from here. I know that there's one more boat that's finished. Uh, it's sitting outside. In fact, not only is it finished, it's actually a customer's boat. They've been using it. It's one of our club members, uh, Roger Anderson. Uh, and let's take a closer look at that 39 and uh, get a, an idea of some of the features that you put on that boat for them. Tron, uh, no better place than in a finished boat uh, that just rolled out the door. Of course, this boat left the factory about eight months ago. 
uh, came back for a little factory service and tweaking. To me, it looks like a brand new boat that just rolled out, but Roger Anderson and Pam, who are going to be joining us, uh, they're all the way from Texas, they're going to be joining us here for this weekend at the Fort Myers Poker Run. So, this is a 39 center console. It's got uh, one, two, three Mercury 350 Barados, a good package for this boat. Um, just let's give us a quick walkthrough on this 39. Yeah, this is what's uh, unique with this boat. It has the larger top okay. with, the, with the additional second row seating. We also have the, the seating in the back in lieu of a fish tank. We have an, another seat there. Right. So like we talked about a little bit earlier, was that you know a lot of these boats are no longer fishing boats per se. Right. They are no party boats. Sure. So you can see some of the rod holders are now uh, being coupled with rod holder They're combinations. Converted. Sure, yeah, and combination. So, which is a fantastic thing. You know, this one has all the upgrades. It has the sea deck flooring in it. It has the double diamond stitch. Uh, it's also a fully painted side and console. Yeah. Uh, so this boat basically has all the bells and whistles, you know. It had the Mercury racing controls. Yep. And then two GPSs and uh, yeah, it, it's loaded up. Basically. All the good stuff, all, yep. all the gingerbread as they would say. But well, I agree with you. I think it's got the best of everything. Uh, we talked about these newer colors, these metallic browns, which are really spectacular. Uh, now we're getting into the beige and the cream colored materials uh, rather than the old fashioned white. Uh, we're the custom painted interior is really nice. The JL audio system obviously kicks butt. But uh, here we have now a finished 39 that is going to be on the poker run this weekend. But Tron, and I'm sure you'll agree with me and most of you guys out there that are watching, we can love these boats all we want. Uh, the guys love them. They've got all this sexy styling that we love. Uh, they've got great performance. But at the end of the day, if the women don't like the boat, then if we don't have their approval, there's no point in having the boat at all. So I think that it's time for us, Tron, to first of all thank you for a great factory tour. And secondly, to introduce a couple of ladies who are joining us for the Fort Myers Poker Run. And uh, let's walk around here and find out from these ladies if this boat gets their Chicago sister approval uh, for this weekend. Uh, Emilia and Christina, they're from Chicago. They just arrived in Fort Myers today. Emilia, are you here? Emilia, hi. And her sister, Christina. Hi, I'm Christina. Niels Johnson, I would have to say, as one of the co-founders and owners of Nortec, you're the techie design guy, the engineering, the brains behind the designs. Niels, I don't think you would dispute that. You're the guy that's behind the scenes, but you're putting out all these designs and you're building a lot of the parts and a lot of the things that people don't see here at the factory. Yeah, we do pretty much everything in the house. Uh, obviously lately we got bigger, so we, um, we sub some of the interior parts out, but everything is designed in the house. Mm -hmm. And if you choose to serve it out, it's, it's, it's first done right here right. in place. And then, but anyway, still most of the parts are made right here in the house. Well, we're overlooking here the uh, layup room, layup shop. And uh, of course, we've already done a pretty extensive tour with your partner, Tron. Um, but it's true that you are more of a behind the, sign, behind the scenes guy that doesn't always make it to the boat show, doesn't always make it out to the poker run, but that's because, it doesn't mean that you're not working, that's because you're here designing, creating. We just uh, stepped in your office a moment ago and I saw a big drafting board with lots of designs of all the different boats that you build, experimenting with different tops and different lines and different colors, and you pretty much have to trial and error everything, don't you? We do, we, we've done it for a lot of years now, so we um, we have a certain pattern that we follow. We find our own style, kind of like the different car manufacturers, and we try to, you know, we follow that what we're good at. You sure, know? And sure. We found, and and yes, it's uh, it's trial and error, but uh, you know we can we can change things really quick right here in the house if it doesn't work. You know? Yeah, that's the advantage we do have. You know, we don't have to go through a huge. Uh, engineering process being we are, the, we are the engineers and we are the designers and we are the actual builders so we can sure. do everything in the house. Now the other thing that we that see, keeps coming home you know here to us as we come to the Nortec factory and talking to Tron and talking to the sales guys and your dealers we all know that Nortec is capable of building so many more different models you've already proven it 
uh, in the years, the 25 plus years that Florida Powerboat Club has been affiliated with you guys. You've come out with so many different models, but clearly uh, the whole market and Nortec and the way you're designing is going towards that sport center console performance boat. And I guess it gets to the point when you've got up to 80 boats backlogged in production, it's hard to say yes to that guy that wants to build a 50-foot turbine boat or something that's really unique and high performance. I mean, what do you do with that guy? And, and I know you'd love to do it, but I guess at the end of the day, we're still a business and we still have to keep production rolling on certain models that are popular. And yeah, that's very true. We, uh, we do have to say no to a lot of those jobs unless they pay extremely well, but, sure. but they have to pay really, really well in order to do it, you know, because not only do you get behind on your regular production, but you, you use the people on something that they shouldn't do, you know. Sure. So, but we always like, I always kind of try to have a, being now with all these center consoles and, 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 and which is popular, I also see a trend towards more, maybe the same holes with different type of deck configurations. Sure. Uh, but, for example, the Monte Carlo and the Flyer, yeah. those boats are getting popular, they pay well, mm -hmm. uh, they're sexy, they, so a lot of these center console guys, not, you know, not a lot, but a few of them maybe bought a center console and realized they don't have 20 friends to take around, sure. you know, and they want to go back to maybe not a, you know, full blown power boat, but something in between that's sexy and nice and sure. functions with the outboard type power. That's right. And and uh, we see a trend there, so we have a lot of every new model hull we have, we also have a a, a fully covered uh, runabout style deck. Sure, sure. For yeah. instance, the new 56, we already have a Monte Carlo flyer deck for that boat. Yes, yeah, sure. And we have a couple of them actually in on order. Yeah. And also the 45, I'm planning to make a Monte Carlo flyer deck for that sure. boat. So I always try to have those projects going on the side burner. Right. And they won't be done tomorrow, but you know, one day they're done and, and they're ready to go. You're ready to go. Yeah. Uh, a lot of talk about this new facility or the facility that you own in Cape Coral being expanded with 50,000 more feet, uh, extending uh, this facility to just lay up and then doing all the rigging and finishing over there at the other location. That's got to work well into your program. And now where does that put you now day to day? Since you maybe are not necessarily designing new boats every day, where do you find yourself spending most of your time uh, as chief designer, as a guy who really is behind the design of all the parts and all the you know all the component parts and all the, the actual hull designs and and obviously right from the building of the molds you know what, what do you spend most of your your eight hours a day doing well there's a huge follow-up on all these designs one thing is to build the tools and the and and and, and the, the molds and all and so forth but there's also interiors and and, and brackets and covers and stainless steel and that's also done by me all that prototyping sure. so so once these molds are done, then it's a full day and more so just to make sure everybody does what they're supposed to do right. and get all these models into a production that runs real well. For instance, the new 45, we sold a ton of those and you still, they're still not going through production as smooth as I'd like to. Right. So that's, once something is built and done, that's my, really my mission is to make sure get everything into a system where everybody can come in and actually do the job and get the bolts out the door. I see. Yeah. No, There's okay. a long period after these things are done in order to make that happen. I can't help but asking you and for our viewers out there because you are just a design-minded, always, always coming up with your next design, but you also have a passion for cars and that's how you got started years ago when you first came to the United States and you also have a passion for motorcycles. You just finished building a new custom motorcycle, it was featured in a uh, European or Norwegian magazine. Uh, how, where do you find the time to develop, design and build a custom motorcycle when you guys are going gangbusters here at the factory? You know, I do that. I'm not a big TV guy, you know, so I don't watch much TV. So I come home, I, I do that at the house, in the garage. I don't work on it every day, but I take an hour now, an hour then. Sure. I bring some parts into work, you know, and I stay a little bit later and do some stuff. And and it takes about a year, and then you have a bike built. You know? <laughs> and that's got to be for you. It's yeah. like you're, you're escaped from the factory. You escape from what is obviously a very cool job that you guys, in what company that you created, but it probably takes your mindset into a completely 
completely different arena where you can chill out and, and it's therapeutic, I'm sure, in many ways, where you could just focus on that project and nobody bother you whatsoever, just doing your thing. Yeah, especially motorcycles uh, yeah. because you know, everything we do needs cranes and trucks and 20 people to move around. Uh, it's very refreshing to sit down on a, in your garage and, 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 and build a bike because you can do everything yourself. You can sure. lift the motor out, you can put the wheels on, yeah. every single component on the bike you can do by yourself. Sure. Which is kind of nice. You know? yeah. I mean, it's done, you roll it out and you drive it down the street. Yeah. Well, hopefully, Niels, uh, this weekend, you know, of course, we've got the poker run in town. Uh, we've got about 35 boats registered. We'll be down at the Pink Shell. I know you live here locally, so I think that you should jump on that motorcycle and ride it down to the Pink Shell and show everybody else what Niels Johnson does in his spare time, aside from being a family man. I will do that. Okay. It sounds like a lot of fun, actually. Okay. I, I need some uh, an excuse to ride it. So <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> All right, Niels Johnson here at the Nortec Factory.